for Patrick. Uh, when comedians cause chaos at award shows. Uh oh, we already know where this is going. <laughs> we know where this is going. But guys, before we begin the video, I want you guys to know this is what we worked on today. It is Ambi, uh, from my Think of series or you know universe that I created. Uh, it's gonna be part of the three v three series. I will be soon making a video about it. It's gonna be a three part series about this. I don't have time to gonna say series, so just enjoy the video. <laughs> Comedians notoriously hate award shows, and celebrities hate when comedians host them. host them because the comedians can't resist the opportunity to get on stage and belittle celebrities during their night of highest honor. <laughs> but the fans love these spectacles because we get to sit back and watch the chaos. Relax, I'm going to try and be nice. You're global megastars with amazing talent, most of you. A few of you just married well. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> We, we all do. We all do. Oh, man. His was, like, bro, his was so memorable. When I watched those clips about him, uh, he literally shit on everyone, dude. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the funniest, most savage, and painfully awkward moments that have come from comedians at award shows, starting with Jerry Seinfeld, who exposed these ceremonies for what they truly are. Comedy legend Jerry Seinfeld bluntly Wait, explained his hatred for award shows while he accepted the Comedian Award presented by HBO in 2007. You don't give awards to comedians. <laughs> First of all, comedians don't need awards. Awards are for people that are looking for work. We're not looking for work. Jerry opens with an interesting point. Comedians will not sell more tickets to their stand-up performances based on some pretentious award because being funny is subjective. However, in cinema, receiving an accolade will make producers and directors more interested in hiring an award-winning actor in future films for obvious creative and marketing reasons. You know, I don't know why we're so fascinated with actors in this culture. They haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo mini brains. Why? We must honor this man. Why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. <laughs> Playing dress up and pretend is not genius, ladies and gentlemen. It's not genius. <laughs> Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready? Say what we told you to say. <laughs> Fantastic. He did it! Give this man a huge golden trophy! He's a goddamn oh genius! As an actor God. himself, I'm sure Jerry is just joking here. However, comedians are often writers, directors, producers, and performers of their own material. Ironically, it kind of makes them more deserving of these esteemed awards. And secondly, and even more important, is um, your whole career as a comedian is about making fun of pretentious, high-minded, self-congratulatory BS events like this one. The whole feeling in this room of reverence God and damn, honoring dude. is the exact opposite of everything I have wanted my life to be about. Now him clearly expressing disdain for these ceremonies might come as a surprise to you, but comedians before and after him have felt the exact same hatred. Like Don Rickles, who paved the way for comedians after him to unapologetically say what's on their mind. I am so excited to get this Kakamemi Award. While you may think it's disrespectful to just make fun of an award you're being honored for, it's hard to take it seriously when there are so many award shows that you can't even keep track of them. Oh, you have true. the Golden Globes, the Emmys, the Grammys, Directors the Guild of America oh, Awards, yeah. the BAFTA Awards, Screen... And they have like some that are not even like the greatest awards. It's like just so many of them now. Like there's Fox, there's MTV, I think there's even, yeah, like the, the Screen Actors, there's the... There's some that are like, I don't know, there's just so many. I don't even watch any of these anymore. Or even at all, really. I remember just seeing some clips of these awards, like the funniest stuff or like the controversy ones, right? Like obviously the Kanye West and Taylor Swift one, you know, like... <laughs> Actors Guild Awards, Producers Guild of America Awards, Writers Guild of America Awards, The Oscars, MTV Video Music Awards, BET Awards, American Music Awards, and that's not even all of them. These people spend more time celebrating than they do creating. I get this wonderful TV Land Award and uh, <laughs> whoever designed it is a moron. Now I'm sure you all know the typical structure of these events. One person will be the host of the entire night, but different celebrities will take the stage to present each award. Usually these celebs read their lines off teleprompters, and often they are reading bad jokes that someone else wrote with terrible delivery. We're here to present the VMA to the best group, and we love everything that has to do with groups. Yeah. Oh my god. 
group therapy, group hugs, groupies. Very exciting for both of us because we're both nominated. I guess second hand. Oh my god. Uh, actually, James, I'm not nominated tonight. Oh, come on, Ann, don't be so modest. <laughs> no, I'm not modest. I'm just not nominated. It used to be you get naked, you get nominated. Not anymore. Not anymore. Which made what? Don's subtle jab about reading from the teleprompter that much funnier. Let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. Don then goes on to sarcastically laugh at the jokes. First, it's a thrill to be matched up at the Emmy Awards with Mr. Warp himself, Don Rickles. The world hasn't seen a pairing like this since John McCain and Sarah Palin. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's the deep layers of irony that make Don's delivery so good. These celebrities know award shows are pompous. They also know Don isn't afraid to call them out on their bullshit. That's Yet even before funny. he can get the jokes out, they already laugh and applaud the comic legend. But don't you dare try to interrupt one of his punchlines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach, you know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway, uh, I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. <laughs> Closer than two blocks. You have no lines, Julia, just not. <laughs> anyway, uh. And Damn. even if the entire Dude. ceremony is dedicated to one person, like when Martin Scorsese received a tribute for the AFI Life Achievement Award, Don Rickles will humble them. Marty, you are the most annoying director I ever had in my life. <laughs> Damn, Little dude. guy, he's the kind of guy in prison was the squealer all the time. <laughs> Pulling on your pants like going, let's do it again, Marty. When we see all the films you did, none of them were great. <laughs> but if you feel bad for Martin, don't worry. Clint Eastwood got the same treatment the previous year. Clint. Oh, did he? I say it. Nobody else has said it, and I say it from my heart. You're a lousy actor. <laughs> God damn. This is why you can never get too comfortable at these gatherings. Like when David Mann was presenting at the Neighborhood Awards and Lavelle Crawford caught a stray fat joke. Anybody got some chicken, an extra piece of chicken? <laughs> Lavelle, I know you got some. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take your jacket off and cover that side of the audience up. I think we can all agree that oh the best moments God. come from the host directly sniping one of the members of the audience. It's a big year for Jack. He also got in a hot tub with Kathy. I, I think what it is also is because like, uh, like you see like a lot of these actors has like big egos and like oh it's so, it's so good to like get them humble, put them down a peg. Uh, they're not that great. They do some good work here and there, but they're not the most special people in the world. You know what I mean? The Bates. <laughs> but hey, who hasn't? One of the most savage roasts came from Amy Poehler at the 2013 Golden Globes. She introduced director Catherine Bigelow, who was previously married to famous director James Cameron. Catherine was nominated for Best Director for the film Zero, Zero Dark, Dark Thirty, Thirty, which received a ton of criticism for glorifying CIA torture in the film. I haven't really been following the controversy what? over Zero Dark Thirty, but when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. Damn. God damn, dude. <laughs> That's funny. Amy has built herself a reputation for kind of being a roast master. Yes, Matt Damon is here for Behind the Candelabra. Where are you, Matt? <laughs> Matt, on any other night in any other room, you would be a big deal. But tonight, and don't take this the wrong way, you're basically a garbage person. <laughs> oh, and Tina Fey is damn good, too. Gravity is nominated for Best Film. Oh, no, she's a good comedian, by the way. It's the story of how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. <laughs> But sometimes yeah. making jokes about celebrities doesn't always go over well. Like the time Sarah Silverman made fun of Britney Spears' children at the 2007 VMAs. But have you seen Britney's kids? Oh my god. They are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see. Yeah. They are so cute. They're, they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. What? I'm serious, they're this cute, you guys. 
The audience didn't think this joke was very funny, but this was back in 2007 when the internet didn't have a full force grip on everyone's lives, so nobody was tweeting their outrage against Sarah. That was not the case for Bill Burr, who made a bunch of jokes at the tw Oh, so she got lucky. That's before Twitter, or like maybe, maybe like it, it wasn't where like people used to go to social media like, I hate this person. He, they made this joke like, uh, yeah, I can't speak, but I remember like uh, seeing a video of a streamer who made like a song because she made her VTuber like really fat and chunky. And so she was just freestyling a song or whatever, right? And somebody literally retweeted and complained about that. Oh, people who are away are not a source of your jokes or something like that. Damn, dude. It's insane how like, it's like, bro, they're not even like, you're not even in it. You don't even watch the stream or it doesn't seem like it. And you're just complaining like holy hell you could just like do something else you know what i mean online and now like that's what a lot of people would like do is like as soon as somebody says online like a celebrity or artist whatever i disagree with this person because this is the right whole goddamn paragraphs and all that it's insane 2021 Grammys pre-show that caused uproar online. After a beautiful piano solo from Igor Levitt, Bill was brought on stage and said this. How are you? Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Critics exploded online, <laughs> scolding Bill for making such a distasteful joke during a night of honor and praise. Little did critics know, it was only going to get worse. Bill immediately followed up by making fun of the Grammys pre-show as he thought he was going to be hosting the actual Grammys, only for him to show up to an empty Hollywood set presenting awards to a handful of producers and a few thousand people watching on the internet. I bought yeah. a suit for this! I thought I was gonna be on TV! I'm such a moron! I am losing so much money right now. For some reason, they had Bill, a white man from Boston with absolutely no musical talent or knowledge, present all of the Latin music awards and nominees. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this cis white male doing all this Latino stuff? <laughs> and he unsurprisingly butchered just about every name. I can't say this name. Natalie, Natalie, what? All right. Uh, <laughs> and the winner, uh, the Grammy goes to Natalia Lafourcade. And the Grammy goes to <laughs> Gustavo Dudamel, conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I will be accepting the Grammy. Wait, why did it, what? Of all people, I understand why he didn't turn it down. I mean, it's money, it's money, you know what I mean? But what? Grammy on behalf of Gustavo Dudamel, congratulations. Crush that one. And the Grammy goes to Frederick Ballantyne. Uh, Angel Blue, Dead Sea Graves. Because of people's outrage, some comedians don't think it's worth it to host anymore. Like uh, Kevin Hart, who decided to drop out of hosting the Academy Awards after he was attacked on Twitter for his unsavory humor. Oh Kevin Hart God. was announced to be the host of the 2019 Oscars, and immediately Twitter erupted, where detractors posted a series of old homophobic tweets. Nearly oh all of them were just really bad jokes that seem relatively menial. However, one stood out more than most. Kevin Hart tweeted, Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, Stop, that's gay. Critics also resurfaced an old joke from his iconic 2010 comedy special, Seriously Funny. I'm gonna tell you guys one of my biggest fears. One of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay. Hey, stop, that's gay. It's quick. Kevin had apologized for these previous words in 2012. In 2015, he also addressed using gay jokes in his film, Get Hard. Did you think this is mildly mean-spirited or at the very least a little bit dated? I said to myself, this is funny. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the day, funny is funny regardless of what area it's coming from. Within 48 hours of the host That's announcement, crazy, Kevin dude. claims he was given an ultimatum. I was given an ultimatum. Kevin, apologize, or we're gonna have to find another host. So he ultimately decided to step down. Kevin did not host the Oscars and said recently in 2024 that he would never consider it ever again. Those good gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Those just aren't comedy friendly environments anymore. Many people like Kevin believe that comedy is under a microscope these days, but it isn't even just everyday that. people online that get offended. Sometimes it's the A-list stars who, even though they are in the entertainment industry themselves, get offended. Like I've noticed that Tom Hanks always has a sour look on his face. 
Anyone in the audience not laughing is terrified of being next. One A-lister who did not like being the butt of the joke was Jada Pinkett oh, Smith, yeah. and her husband's reaction stamped one of the craziest award show moments of all time. During the 2022 Oscars, Chris Rock was presenting That's the award for ago, Best man. Documentary Feature. Naturally, he opened with some jokes. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win! <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins! Like, please! Everything was going great, until he transitioned to a joke about Jada Pinkett. Now, Chris had a joke during the 2016 Oscars about Jada that the crowd loved. Jada's gonna boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited! Ironically, this joke was way harsher than the one he was about to deliver. Chris made a joke about Jada, who has spoken openly about having alopecia, a hair loss condition. Chris compared Jada to Lieutenant Jordan O'Neill, the star of G.I. Jane, notorious for her short, buzz-cut hairstyle. Based on Jada's expression, she did not like the joke. Will, on the other hand, was laughing. It's unclear yeah. if he was trying to mask his anger by laughing, or if he genuinely thought the joke was funny. But then the camera cuts back to Chris, and we can see Will storming the stage until he ultimately smacks Chris in the face. He sits back in his seat and yells at Chris, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. The deafening silence in the room permeated when the audience realized this was not scripted, and Chris tried to make sense of what just happened. Bro. This encounter made comedians hate award shows even more because Will faced... Oh my god, dude. I remember that was... Oh god. And that's where everybody was online, by the way. Right? It was, uh, it was not COVID time, but it was like people were still like online like crazy way bigger numbers than we're at now um yeah i mean this is like the beginning of his downfall like when they're like and then like other they already made a lot of memes about him about like the red table stuff the the situation the cheating all etc stuff like that right but then i got under the rug right obviously because everything dies down quickly but when he did this it all came back and it made one thing after next. Like they just keep talking about him, talking about him, talking about him. And now he just made fun of him. like he's no longer a the the fresh prince. They call him like the, the fresh bitch or something like <laughs> zero repercussions for his actions. He was not kicked out, he was not spoken to by the show organizers. In fact, he won his first Oscar for Best Actor later on in the With evening. Nobody he gave a five-minute speech rambling and crying about how God is calling him to love people and to protect people. He received a standing ovation with Hollywood actors crying in support of him. The standing ovation made me realize how detached Hollywood is from reality. The slap incident is likely why we got the extremely safe and not edgy Jimmy Kimmel to host the awards for the next two years. Years, and they were about as funny as you could imagine. Yeah. Christopher is joined by his longtime collaborator, Killian Murphy, who is just wonderful. <laughs> Killian is. Interesting fact about his name it's pronounced Killian when he does drama, when he does comedy, it's Cillian. Actually, I take that back. The reason why we'll never get a good comedian to host an award show again is not because of Will Smith. It's because of Ricky Gervais, who unleashed an onslaught of savage roasts and jokes towards the guests, sponsors, and even the networks who host these events. Ricky <laughs> exposed Hollywood so badly at the 2020 Golden Globes that no organizer will dare set themselves up to get decimated like that again. Yeah, he's Ricky that Gervais was a is a British one. comedian who is known to push the boundaries with he extremely the, edgy the material, office, politics, too. social issues, race, religion. There is absolutely nothing Ricky won't joke about. If people thought that Kevin Hart's material pushed the boundaries, Ricky <laughs> makes Kevin look Kevin like Hart? a comedian for children. So yeah, how he was able Kevin to host Hart? the Golden Globes five times is pretty insane. The first time he hosted was in 2010, and yes, he was still a savage back then. As soon as he stepped on stage, he started attacking Steve Carell. You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you don't know, Ricky Gervais created a British comedy show called The Office in yeah, 2001, the four years before the American version. Ricky's show only lasted one season, but is filmed the exact same way. No music, long awkward pauses, deadpan humor, semi-realistic but also extremely unrelatable chaos in the work environment. The premise of the show is the exact same, and only diehard fans of the American version would argue how it's different. Ricky, like the savage he is, goes on to promote his version of the show, as well as roasting the network hosting the event. Or if you think that you know what a big version fun? of the show is jump the shark a little bit, then um, watch the original, Fridays, <laughs> on Adult Swim. <laughs> or get the box set, that's still available. So, um, go and get that. Um, I will be making the most of this opportunity. I'm not used to these yeah, sort of viewing figures. <laughs> We're watching a video with the most committed called Chaos in the Worst Shows. <laughs> And uh, we just uh, passed like the uh, the slap of Will Smith right now, and we're just work. And also, I'm just working on my character right now, Ambi, and I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm chilling. You know, watching videos. Uh, we're watching this one right now. Um, how this uh, the comedians literally destroying like the people at the Oscars. Um, <laughs> it's just so funny, dude. This is so funny, man. He literally killed. At the Golden Globes, like he literally destroyed everyone, dude. I don't know if you guys remember this clip when this one came out. It was insane, man. Let's face it, it was NBC. So he then goes on to belittle actors' value to the world. Notice how they almost clap for themselves. It is an honor to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. <laughs> actors, they're just. They're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, with lawyers or doctors. Yo, thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just working on this right now. It seems like this is kind of like me just kind of like uh like kind of work on the shattering right now um i don't want to be like too quiet so I, I usually play a video while we're doing the art you know so we could talk about the art the the video before i talk about the uh, artwork again um so that's that's like my uh my new stick it's react andy but i'm still doing art uh it's just like a new thing i've been doing can you imagine a real surgeon doing what hugh laurie does in house it would be pathetic <laughs> He'd be all over the place. We're going, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know? Hugh Lowry did not like that joke. Another celebrity not very fond of Ricky's jokes was Mel Gibson. Oh my Mel God. has struggled Mel with Gibson? alcoholism since he was... Oh my God. Mel Gibson is one of the most angry people ever. Yo, what up, Empress? How's it going? I'm also streaming, by the way. But thank you again for the follow. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the artwork. Uh, and then uh, if you guys are curious more about my artwork, you go check out my Instagram or my YouTube shorts. That's where I usually post all of my artwork there was 13 years old. He is also known in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. In 2006, He's he got crazy. arrested for a DUI and Did then he, proceeded to blame Jews for all like the that? wars around the world before threatening the police officer. So Ricky had to take a jab. I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean, it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here. So if I said, it's, <laughs> honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. <laughs> Unless the next man, it's Mel Gibson. <laughs> Ricky's comments throughout the night felt distasteful to many around the world, but numbers don't lie, and he drove NBC's ratings through the roof. The 67th annual Golden Globe Awards presents NBC with its biggest non-sports viewership in the slot in six Damn. years. The Golden Globe Awards gains 12% in adults 18-49 and 14% in total wow. viewers versus An last year's telecast. So he viewers. was invited back again the next year. Also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, what? what? Probably. <laughs> My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. Ricky set the tone for the night that 2011 would be even crazier than 2010, immediately attacking the nominees, specifically The Tourist, which was a 2010 film led by Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie that was nominated for Best Motion Picture. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron, Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, 
I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen the tourist. Who has? Um, but no. The Tourist was notoriously a terrible movie and many wondered why it was nominated in the first place. Well, if you understand how Golden Globes are chosen, it might make a bit more sense. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a voting body of about 90 journalists that determine who gets nominated and wins the trophy. To get into the HFPA, you must write for a foreign publication but live in Los Angeles. It's no what? secret that members of the HFPA like to use their status to mingle with celebrities. It's like if I had a real vote on who wins a Grammy and I started hitting up rappers to have dinner with me. They might entertain it because theoretically I could help them win an award. So what? you will notice Ricky often says the Hollywood foreign press is corrupt. It must be good because it's nominated, so shut up, okay? <laughs> and I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor going around that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood foreign press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... Ricky also had to take more shots at Mel Gibson. Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. And of course, he had to dig into Steve Carell some more. He was a job <laughs> actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. Ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> It's important to know that Ricky doesn't actually have hard feelings for Steve. They are both in on the joke and love to play up the bit. It's funny, he always makes fun of me, always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like, before one of these awards shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. He's such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, just well, to no, warn you. But if, uh, I told him what I was going to say. You know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. Some people just don't like the idea of a person being the butt of someone's joke. So they definitely wouldn't like this stray that Sandra Bullock caught at the end of the night. The what? next presenter is a national treasure. Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Surely, after these attacks, he wouldn't be brought back to host the 2012 awards. After oh. all, the Hollywood Foreign Press did not want him back, <laughs> with one member stating, My worry was that he was insulting, and when I invite someone to my house, they don't insult me. But this is show business. I guess I'm old-fashioned. But NBC was strongly in favor of Gervais returning because the ratings were just as good as they were last year, with 17 million live viewers Ew. for the entire show. So they decided to bring him back for a third year, and God. he was as unhinged as ever opening with lines that proved he could care less about this spe bro he's just like you you want to bite me back in just to give me more ammo to talk shit about the industry i am totally in and i'm getting paid and be a national tv let get let me in that is crazy dude bro they like i said they they only care about the numbers they don't care how how bad they look look at hollywood right now is is Especially looking, looking, Nickelodeon is literally getting garbage right now, like press right now. Um, they're literally like in the dumpster fire right now, dude. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, it's just so crazy how things are. Anyways, uh, we're almost done with this video, guys, and then we're gonna start chilling, uh, hearing music and talk about the artwork or talk about uh, like any artwork you guys been creating or if, uh, anything that's going on in the world, I guess, except politics, guys. I will not get into that because I have, I'm stupid as fuck. I have no sides. Special evening. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. <laughs> Sorry, is it? It's four. It's four. 
For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. The first presenter he brought up was Johnny Depp, and he called back to his previous joke last year about his movie, The Tourist. Have you... Ready? I guess so. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no. <laughs> the lead actor of a movie that was nominated for a Golden Globe, admitting that he didn't even watch his own movie the following year, says just about everything you need to know about the value <laughs> of these awards. Celebrities, like Elton John, have had enough of Ricky's nonsense. Even Ricky wrote on his blog after the event, I've told my agent to never let me be persuaded to do it again. But then 2016 came around and Gervais was made an offer he couldn't refuse. Damn. He tweeted, I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Hashtag Golden Globes. Ricky genuinely believed he would never be back, so he made the 2016 Golden Globes his most diabolical performance ever. God damn, it's got the legend. Shush. Shut up, you disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding. Ricky kept reassuring everyone in the crowd he would be nice this evening. He was lying. <laughs> I am going to be nice tonight, and I'll tell you why. The president of the Hollywood Foreign Press just told me that if I say anything offensive or crass or resort to innuendo, he is going to come out here and personally pull me off. So that's an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah, I'll do it. Yes, yes, that is the level. An old man pulling me off. And then again insinuated that this award show is corrupt. One Hollywood publication said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away from the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Everyone is clapping and laughing because they know it's true. Ricky continued to just minimize and bash the award show every which way he could. All female remakes yeah. are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. <laughs> There's going to be a female remake of Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios because they get guaranteed box office results and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... <laughs> Shut up, I don't care. If you do win tonight, remember God that damn, no one dude. cares about that award as much as you do, okay? Bro, this guy Don't is get emotional. Damaged, man. It's embarrassing, okay? That award is, no offense, worthless. It's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Honestly, there is nothing more I can say to add to this. Eva Longoria and America Ferreira aren't just beautiful, talented actresses. They're also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. But I'm sure you can tell the energy of this show feels God different damn, than previous dude. years. The first three shows he hosted... Uh, do a back, uh, do a backer for 20 subs? I cannot do it because I'll risk my hand. I have nerve damage on my hand, and so, and I have a uh, mess of two fingers and all that. So if I fall, and I, was, I broke my humerus too, it's still healing, by the way. So if I fall, I I could ruin my my hand. It's already ruined, even worse. As much as I want those twenty subs, I cannot get them. I'm sorry, I cannot risk doing a, 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 a backflip for twenty subs. <laughs> no, you're good. No, no, you're good. I'm not taking no offense to it. And uh, let's move on. Playful, often chuckling to himself devilishly. But this show, he seems more fed up and actually just trying to be blunt. Oh. This show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too. This could be half an hour. Okay. Let's get through it. Right. Unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen. It doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. And for some reason, the producers <laughs> decided it would be a good idea for Ricky to introduce Mel Gibson, oh, who he had no. previously attacked multiple times, and this time would be no different. Listen. 
I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, OK? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mal blames... We know who Mal blames. <laughs> Mal's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. No. <laughs> Oh, I want to say God. something the nice about oh, Mal that guy, before dude. he Isn't comes out. Um, so, oh yeah, okay, here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. <laughs> Please welcome Mal Gibson. The night concludes, celebrities are angry, the Hollywood Foreign Press is angry, Mel Gibson is angry, Ricky Gervais is never coming back. Until 2020, where they asked him to host for the fifth time. People were shocked. Ricky was shocked. And if we thought his Wait, 2016 what? show was direct and less playful, oh, yeah, 2020, yeah, yeah, 2020 felt like he oh, yeah. did not tell one joke, but rather just statements of how much he hates Hollywood. You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so... I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood Foreign Press can barely speak English. He immediately set the stage that he would go out with a bang, and timbers were shivered. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Ronan Farrow is the son of Woody Allen, who became a journalist and led the charge in exposing Harvey Weinstein for his decades of sex crimes oh, inside the film my industry. God, yeah. Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. Tom Hanks didn't like that one. Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist, so... It baffles me how most of Ricky's harshest roasts since 2010 were towards the organizers of the event, and they still hired him five times. But the ending of his it's monologue good money. was it's good not a joke. Money, man. So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f off, okay? <laughs> His wit and his charm we saw in previous years was no longer present. Yeah, he, he had used it all up. Angry and Our angry next presenter and angry. starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut the f up. Fans Damn, absolutely loved dude. Ricky's direct attacks on the privileged it's class. Crazy, These man. harsh jokes are likely the most adversity they had to face all year. Classically, journalists hated his performance. Yeah, that's what, I call him uh, Ambi. Uh, he's a bomb samurai character, Gantry X. Yeah, he kind of looks like a bomber dude wearing a samurai. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what he is. So I did a good job. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a bomb character. Uh, this actually is a mask, by the way. Uh, it's based on a comic book that I'm writing right now called Think Of. He's one of my characters in my story. Uh, all these characters that have, like, a creature on their face are all masks, really. Some of them, you are going to see their faces eventually in the comics someday. Uh, some of them, you're never going to see the face. <laughs> Rolling Stone said, The host's shtick at the 2020 Golden Globes felt incredibly stale. Salon said, Why the Golden Globes and host Ricky Gervais felt particularly pointless. Variety said, But most of the time, his stand-up seemed lazy. Which is true. 
it was kind of lazy because it didn't seem like he was joking. But hey, if these celebrities are going to congratulate themselves over a dozen times per year with superficial awards and trophies, then they need a comedian to humble them. But I think we can all agree that the real winners of these events are the fans, who get to laugh True. and reminisce on the comedic chaos that ensued at the expense of multi-millionaires. True. And then we would just want to see like people that are like in high power, uh, get get humble. You know, that's like the end of the day, it's just to get humble. You know what I mean? These celebrities and stuff. Comedians um, notoriously. Just like Pete Diddy. He got humble today. He got, his uh, home got raided. <laughs> oh, man. I am Marvick and Girls. I'm chasing everyone. Thank you, your agent and your god and f <laughs> Uh... I'm sorry for Ricky Gears. It's having the best celebrity uh, roaster dome contest. Ricky humbling the Hollywood elite will always be entertaining. Yeah, because there's a lot of bad stuff in Hollywood. I mean, we just saw a couple things exposed in Hollywood, uh, especially recently, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. We also got like celebrity celebrities going crazy, ranting online, things they don't know about, things they do know about, or because their ego got hurt, because they got this. It's like, ugh, God. Yeah. Oh man, this is why people loved it, cause uh he rose people that we don't like, I guess in some ways. I guess you know, like I don't know, get sit down, and get humble, <laughs> or be humble. There you go.